Hello and welcome to the MHG podcast. The world's dark, the world's miserable, so we want to bring you some joy, we want to bring you some light. Maybe not in that order, I can't do orders, I, that's why I don't work in McDonald's. Hi Bradley, hence the rambling, and uh, joining me as always, Stu, how you doing Stu, save me. I'm good, yeah yeah, very bright, uh, I've been thinking about doing more I like fun stuff out in the sun. I mean, I go out quite a lot anyway, but I don't think I'm making the most use of the fact that we still at the moment, we've got a biosphere. We can actually breathe and we can actually enjoy sunlight. So I'm thinking of, yeah, I'm thinking of getting out a little bit more. Well, you've got a steam deck, so you can. Exactly, exactly. I don't want to be out there bereft of any gaming experiences. Do you know what I mean? That'd be awful. You've got a full PC you can take with you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and believe me, I would. If, although, the last time I went to visit the office with work, I was like, right, I can pack everything, like a laptop and all my clothes. I can fit it all in to like this rucksack if I'm really, really clever. Did that, and then I was like, yeah, but there's no way I'm getting a Steam Deck in there with me. That's a whole other bag, that is. Well, is it, to be honest, the case for the Steam Deck is its own case. So, you know. You just carry it. I just have to carry it like a, you order a guitar, like put a strap around it and, yeah, just kind of carry it. <laughs> okay, now I want a guitar case for my Steam Deck. You probably need one, yeah. <laughs> what I actually want is something that has an actual slot for micro SD cards. I've, I've seen your uh, your terrible struggles with all this, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, because I'm, I'm clumsy, so I keep, like, dropping them. <laughs> and... You well, know, they're tiny. Yeah, yeah, they're not cheap. The, the sizes you need. So, yeah, I need something I can like. Obviously, I hopefully one day, you know, Steam and Valve will get this all sorted, and it'll be absolutely fine. Where you can have as many as you want plugged in, as long as you've got the ability to do it. Like you can hard drives on PCs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I would settle for just a little pouch in the Steam Deck case that I can pop my micro SD cards into. Well, yeah, I think that what would also be good, and the reason I was just slow then, is because I'm going to have a look. If there's some sort of SD card hub that you can get, uh, like have a ribbon cable that goes into the SD... Because I've got on my like on my Saturn and a couple of other ones, they take SD cards in the optical disc emulator. So basically yeah. the thing that you swap out so that instead of got you you're having a CD drive, you have a... Uh, SD card slot and they supply you with like a little extension lead for that which is just like a ribbon cable that slots in and it means you can place it somewhere else instead of having to dig into the guts of the machine every time you want to change out an SD card I'm wondering if they have one of them but it has like little slots for lots of SDs that you can switch between that'd be that'd be awesome that that should be really that'd be handy I don't have to have both running at the same time then if I could just switch between without having to take them out that 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 would be okay. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, do you know what else would be okay? Point. What else would be okay? Talking about video games. Oh yeah. Uh, because apparently, for one of our listeners has said, right, all we go on about is Steam Deck. I, I, I don't think that's true. Um, you know, we're not, not. We're not. Steam Give me their name and address, and I'll go and beat them up. <laughs> it's me, Stu. It's me. <laughs> um, no, uh, we do, but we love our Steam Decks and what you're going to do. But we do love video games. I have segwayed once. Can I do a double segue? Is that possible? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm good. there's got to be a Guinness World Records for the amount of segues in the shortest amount of time. There are. Well, you, you'll win it. Oh, and yeah. I'm still waiting for your filibuster as well on a load of uh, games. Oh, that's the ADHD. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I forgot about it and then got them covered. Um, so, <laughs> indie devs, send me a bunch of games and I'll filibuster them. Um, but, Sorry. yeah, I forgot. Um, yeah. The ADHD cast. Uh, Stu, what have you been playing? So, to begin with, I've been playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. As you'd expect, because I'm a you know, scroll and beat him up fan from way back in the day. One of my favourite games and in my top 10 list is Alien vs Predator by Capcom. I love that sort of thing. I love Guardian Heroes. I love, you know, Streets of Rage 4 was 
a huge thing for me and still think of that as one of the best if not the best of that type of game mm-hmm. and yeah this one's rocked up it's really funny because they're, they're releasing this uh, TMNT Cowabunga collection of all the previous games or a lot of them and I would have expected that to have been out to get people stoked for this new game but it's actually coming out after weird anyway so what Shredder's Revenge is if you don't know if you had your head under a rock is it's a scrolling beat em up as you'd expect that feels like pretty much a direct sequel to Turtles in Time the arcade games basically the, the two major arcade games TMNT and TMNT TIT or TIT uh, Turtles <laughs> in Time and um, yeah so y- yeah so you basically go along as you pick one of the turtles and in this game you can also pick April O'Neil and Splinter <clears throat> and you do what you'd expect you, you go around you beat things up uh, you defeat the Foot Clan blah 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 what's different about it is well not a massive amount but it has brought a lot of quality of life improvements to it. So it's got like a, a super meter that you can regenerate by doing taunts, which is really clever because that's like very much in the the Turtles kind of franchise feel, you know, the, the turtle doing a little dance or swaggering around or whatever just to, to get back some bar. And there's loads of more combos available to you and there are lots of different animations that are fun because the overall thing from the original games back in the 80s and 90s was that they were the Konami ones that were really daft like the Simpsons arcade that are as much about feeling part of the cartoon as they are about really sharp kind of clever level design so the levels are fairly basic they look gorgeous the whole design is beautiful and it it is like an extension of of what came before but with loads more detail and lovely graphical touches really cartoonish in the best kind of a way but the level layouts themselves are not particularly you know exciting um and they don't really force you to do anything particularly special they just walk from left to right but yeah, the the overall joy of getting into the melee and extracting from the melee little technical bits so you get better. And also, I presume, playing in a group would be good fun because it's up to six players. I've, I've only played it solo. And that kind of like big bash together melee in a cartoon environment, you don't get a lot of. And so, yeah, it, so far, it's a, it's a double thumbs up for me. It's been really excellent. Yeah, I've played this one as well. Um... Um, I have a problem with it though. Oh, go on. Yeah, I I, I have to keep restarting it. Why? Uh, because of that intro. Oh, you would just want to see. <laughs> I have to watch the intro over and over and over and over because I'm I'm sorry. I, I forgot just how good the uh, the original Turtles TV series theme tune was. And this slightly adapted version is just as good. It's really great, isn't it? I I believe they got back all or almost all of the original voice cast as well to do it. Yeah. So, you know, it just, yeah, it, it's a complete package. Even if there's bits of it that could be better or that you're not a massive fan of, it's, it's a really good packaged game, you know. Oh, yeah. But I have spent literally the last, what is it, week now that it's been out? I think I've had it... F- five days uh, but in my head I just go I just can't get it out of my head um, I, oh god yeah I bet it's a really good game um, it's it's the quintessential pick up and play as well um, I don't think yeah. I'm, that, I'm not good at it but I don't think that matters you can like kind of brute force your way through it um, by just smashing the buttons um, and it, you will get yeah. through it. Um, might not have like all the skill and, you know, it's like when I try and play football in real life. I can kick a ball and I can probably score the goal, but I'm not going to look good doing it. And it's the same when I play Turtles. I can do it or I might not look good, but I'm getting a ton of fun out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, the, the, the difficulty is pitch right, I think. It's, um, yeah. it, it's not like a hardcore game like Streets of Rage where... When you first, the first time you play it, you're like, how am I going to get off level one with 
you're only using one continue then it's like how can I get off with only losing one life and then it's how can I get out of this stage without losing a single yeah taking a single hit (laughs) because it's got that level of sophistication but also difficulty but yeah this is less sophisticated and less difficult but it's it's really fun and it's much more accessible yeah a hundred percent and dope nods are is it dope nods no dot mu sorry wrong wrong company yeah yeah, mu they oh they've nailed this this genre this is their genre now um no one can touch them i don't think and long may it continue i want to see what they could do next what can they bring next to the table can they maybe have a go at double dragon um, and bring that back um I'd, i'd love to see them give it a go um what crossovers can we get you know, if they've got the licenses, are crossovers possible? And I just, yeah, I can't wait. And I also went back and um, uh, try uh, put the uh, TMNT uh, Turtles in Time onto my Steam Deck emulated. God, that's still good. That's still so good to play. It is, it is. Uh, and I can't wait for the bundle collection, the Cowbugger collection, did you say it was called? Can't wait for that. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, for me, Turtles is like there's a there's a few, and uh, mainly from the eighties, where uh, and Transformers is one of them, uh, which I think it came so fully formed, and the core idea was so good and so pleasant and so you know exciting and adventurous uh, and fun that you can't really top it, and like. If you you can go back and you can kind of like oh we're going to do it we're going to reboot this series we're going to look in a different way and with different characters and all this but you'll never beat that original setup because it was just so perfectly formed at the time. Yeah. Part part of it is you know it's it's the look it's the the soundtrack it's it's just everything it's just in, encapsulated in like one feeling and um, it's not it's not like a nostalgia thing it's genuinely like a, a high level of quality put into it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's unbeatable. And I really want to see good numbers for this game. I reckon it will probably get them. Oh, I, I think it will because even like gamers of a certain degree will appreciate Dot Mu's output in terms of Streets of Rage and Windjammers. I think there are two they did, which is well received yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, but I think Turtles, it, 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 it's never died down turtles it was like was big in the 80s there was the 90s the like the 80s into the 90s films then you had like the michael bay disasters but they done well then there's been various cartoon network adaptions and, and things like that so i don't think it's ever died down so you've got the popularity behind it uh, but what i yeah. want to see now is can, can we just give them all the 80s licenses? Yeah, I want to see what they could do with a Thundercats license, with a Visionaries license, a Jason the Wild Warriors license, and all stuff like that. What can they do with those? Because I, I, I think they could carve themselves out something of a niche here um, and just make bucket loads of money. Uh, all I'm saying is I'll buy a Thundercats version of, of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they'd have to diversify in, in the game type, otherwise it'd start becoming too saturated unless they just um, do an 80s crossover fighting game yeah 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 yeah. that could be it but yeah they could do a fighting game so you could do a thundercats one-on-one fighting game i think that would work really well um or you could do like a, a action rpg with it yeah. i think they could pick any license and do one of those 90s genres uh <laughs> mega tribe style arcade style and yeah off we go to the races jason the world warriors cart so good that would be so good also, I love a banking theme tune, by the way. Jason the Wild Warriors. Oh, I know, I know. But nothing beats Transformers. Nothing beats that theme tune for me. Littlest Hobo. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a Littlest Hobo simulator. Anyway, what have I'm you I'm surprised, been actually, I'm surprised there hasn't been one. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, me too. But yeah, no, go on. What, what have you been playing? I was like, first up for me is a quick one for me actually it's called out there oceans of time uh, it's a sort of pseudo follow-up to another game called out there omega edition i think it's little well, i think it's the omega sign anyway and it's follow-up to that which is this kind of single player only adventure like FTL light but on like a hexagonal grid type thing where you have to go across space etc etc um, but this okay. is kind of a pseudo follow up to that um, and 
I really enjoyed the original. Um, I struggled with this one. I've been trying it on and off, but I just, it's just not grabbed me at all, unfortunately. Um, it's you know the concepts in it are really good and. Um, I like the setting. I like the space setting. I seem to get in like more with that than say like the medieval stuff or, or, or what have you. And you kind of got like resource management that goes into the game. Um, but basically, if you've played an FTL or something like that, you get the idea of the progression. Um, and it's got this narrative in there which is okay, and it branches apparently. But again. <sighs> The story wasn't doing enough to hold me. The gameplay mechanics felt okay at best. Um, and I, t- I felt like it wasn't doing enough to be a follow-up to um, uh, the original out there. And yeah, I just, you know, I, I feel really bad just for like, I just, I've not got much to say about it because I didn't not like it. Because again, I think it does nothing wrong, but it just does not much worth playing if i've got the original sat there yeah it's just a really weird game to have it feels like it's it it, it it's come out too late from the original to actually be a sequel that no one actually understands or cares um right. and you know the visual by the way what i will say the visuals of this game are absolutely outstanding that's one thing it does do and that's why i was originally sort of like drawn in i went oh this looks absolutely beautiful compared to the first out there uh but that's about all all, all it's all it's got and yeah I, I don't i don't know i i really don't know i, I wanted to like this it it's it's average at best um if you've not played the original, then you might get more out of this. But anyone who's played the original, it's not even a case of more of the same. It's I was done with the original when I finished it, and I had no reason to want to play it again. Whereas this just honestly, it just feels like a rehash, maybe a reskin of that original to me. And yeah, I'm, I'm a bit gutted actually because I love championing these sort of games that try and do something with different genres and bring them together. But yeah, I just did not do it for me, unfortunately. Yeah, that's fair. And, you know, I think everybody knows that you you really don't like saying anything negative and only, you know, skirt around it even. Um, it's a shame. It's funny because they presumably, the developers, pretty much mastered what they wanted to do with the first one. Yeah. And it's like, <clears throat> so what's the driver for doing a sequel? You know, what is the actual driver behind it? You know, is it just that you, you think, well, it was great, but it hasn't got the the recognition it deserved, and this will hopefully capitalise on that on the back of it? Is it, oh, we had flaws in the game we think we can fix, but then they couldn't? You know, is it that we've been asked by the publishers to, to do this and we're not really into it? And... It may be one of those things, it may be all of them, it may be something I haven't thought of. But whatever it is, it sounds like it went wrong at, at whichever point they chose. You know, from what you said, it sounds as though it doesn't quite click and doesn't quite fit with anything. Yeah, they, it's... Yeah. So the original, I mean, it's it's a, it's a roguelike, the original. Um, but for me, I, I, I don't know whether they've led away from the roguelike side more. Um, which they possibly have. But the original way out there, I felt like I was getting something from it in terms of progression, and, and this lacks that. What I think this would be better as is an expansion for the original. But the problem is, we're over seven years down the line from the original. Um, so... I don't know what they could have done. It's, you know, it's too late for an expansion, maybe, for a game like this. So I can see why they've gone for something new. But at the same time, no, it didn't need to be. Uh, I mean, the, the, before this, they brought out um, the, frankly, I think, excellent Sigma Theory, um, which right. is a sort of like a political sim sandboxy type thing, which I thought was really, really good. Um, so again, it's another reason I was excited by this. But yeah, no, I just sometimes a game just does not hit, um, and it's unfortunate. Um, so again, I think if they try something new with the out there license, 
they great go ahead and do that this just wasn't wasn't it for me unfortunately yeah yeah no I mean the only reason I ever go on about these things is because I, I feel really bad for the studios and I yeah. hate to just go oh they had one out before and they've brought out another one and it's not brilliant you know I, I hate ending things like that I'm kind of like god there's got to be a reason and I'm sure that they would if they weren't bound by NDAs or just by their employee contracts they would probably tell you what it is and I would love to know but that's a pipe dream really yeah. um, but it's not but, a bad game that, that's the thing no. it's not a bad game and I say, if someone who's never played out there went and played this they'd probably really like it it's, it's, right. it's, 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 it's so tough and, it, and so much love and attention has gone into it that you know this isn't a cash grab by any stretch of the imagination um, I say, but it's just unfortunate. My own personal experience. As I said, I, I've been looking around as well, and there's been some people who have really, really loved this, um, and giving it big, big scores and impressions. Others have been like me and have just gone, eh, "This, you know, yeah. it's all right." So yeah, it's. I mean, it's a. It, I mean, looking even the Metacritic, the Metacritic of this sticks at fifty nine. Um, and it ranges from sort of like proper like sevens, eights and nines uh, right the way down to five, six and four. So it's, you know, this is all over the place review wise as well. Um, so my honest opinion, if you've not played it, wait for a sale and give it a go. Or if you get it in a, a bundle or something, it's worth picking up and just having a look. But if you've played the original, you've got no reason to jump, run out and get this one. Yeah, I think that's all fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, but we'll signal boost it for yeah anyone who likes this genre and hasn't played the first one. It sounds as though if you meet those two criteria, then you should probably go for it. And if, if you don't quite, then wait for a sale. Perfect, yep. Yeah. What's next Sweet. for you? So from me... The next one uh, I mentioned last week, which is Neon White, which should have dropped, you know, before I got onto the podcast, but it didn't drop till 5pm, as we often get stuck with in PAL territories. But it, I won't go on about it very much, not because it isn't new, but because I talked about it a lot when the demo came out a few months back. And <laughs> it's basically the demo was the first level and I've done three levels. And so far, it's just as good. It's excellent. It has one design motive, motif, rather, which is... It's a, it's a speed runny sort of slice of life cut out of Mirror's Edge. That's what it is. It's like it's like Mirror's Edge, but you just do it in small bursts and against the clock. So completing a level isn't particularly difficult, really, or isn't so far. It'd probably get harder. But the thing is, doing it efficiently, speedily, and like a ninja is what you're after. And it's really gorgeous. It's got this fantastic anime aesthetic. I don't bother with the story because I don't bother with stories. Just to <laughs> quote you, Brad. And uh, so I just get to look at the pretty visuals. And it's great. Uh, I don't have a lot of patience for, for games that are score attack or speed running often, but every now and again they'll click with me and I think the reason for this one is that it's about defying gravity and I love that I love Ghost Runner has become one of my favourite games of all time already it's only a couple of years old Mirror's Edge is already one of my favourites uh, I really like uh, Knights is, is possibly my favourite game of all time it always battles with Breath of the Wild so anything where kind of like a Burning Rangers anything where you're kind of like boosting you're in the air you're defying gravity but you're very tethered to gravity at the same time is, is right. That's right in my sweet spot. So I'm loving this game. Yeah, it's. I, I'm looking at it, and my only issue I've got, one of the reasons I haven't picked it up yet, is it looks very, very bright. It is, um, and that that's an issue for me. Unfortunately, um, yeah. I assume there's no like dark mode option or or anything like that to it. Uh, no, it's got very few accessibility options. Yeah. It's got very few options in general. Uh, so, yeah, it could do with, with bo being boosted in that area. But, you know, uh, it's worth us feeding back to them about that, I think, and yeah. see if they've got it on their roadmap. Because it, it, the best bits of Mirror's Edge were the, the actual parkour bits. And if this is that without the bad bits then I really, really, really do want to play it. Um, it just might have to wait until I can get it in a, a cheap sale before taking a risk. 
Um, yes. Just no, to have fair. sat there for when I do have a good couple of days or something. But yeah, it's just one of those at the moment. I just don't think I could play, which is unfortunate because your enthusiasm for it, your enthusiasm I've seen all over the internet for it. But he's, 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 I've got real FOMO at the moment. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I, I've, there are a handful of games that, that do this sort of thing well, not just in this genre, but you know, in all sorts of genres, where they're not just good, they're great for just small blasts, but they are also great for putting a lot of time in if you feel like it. So, like, Ghost Runner isn't like that. It's more like you'll play a level, it'll take a lot of redos to do it, and it, it demands a, a lot of attention, and you get a great satisfaction when you finish it. And it might take you 45 minutes and after that you're probably exhausted with it and then you refresh for a day and then you're itching to get some more whereas this is like you can do a level in you know, 30 seconds and go right yeah I'm going to have a cuppa or you can go right I'm going to beat that and play it like another 15 times or you can go on to the next level and the next level and the next level it's just got a really great really good loop to it that it won't it won't appeal to everybody by any stretch of the imagination first person platformers just don't appeal to everybody and i totally get that um but if it's in your wheelhouse i can't imagine it not being one that you really love kind of thing yeah no uh, yeah you, you 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 sold me just when i can see better <laughs> <laughs> cool um, so, so on, on move, to yourself again, yeah. Yeah, so moving on, almost the opposite of um, uh, uh, of that is a really dark game. Um, and this is the reason I picked it up, was I could see what was going on in, in, in this game. Now, I don't want to describe it as a boomer shooter, uh, but it does come across as a bit of a boomer shooter, that whole retro, modern FPS type thing. It's called Forgive Me Father. Ah. Um, and honestly, it, it, when you look at it initially, and even when you first play it, it's as though someone played the original Doom, the original Wolfenstein, um, then quickly had a quick play of 13, um, or XIII, after reading Cthulhu, um, and just went, yeah, that'll be a good nice. game, and that's what they've made. Um, nice. So, yeah, essentially what you've got here is... It's, it's a 3D game, but it's kind of got... Do you know the aesthetic on stuff like Octopath Traveller? Yeah. Where it's kind of this 2D on these like really well-made 3D backgrounds. So it's kind of got that aesthetic, but from a first-person point of view. So you've got ah. these really nice 3D areas that you're in. Um, it's this cell-shaded, cartoony, comic book-style look to it, hence the 13 reference. Um, and but all the enemies left in are kind of like this 2D always face on type thing um, and you go through like corridors and rooms and like you get like so you might go through some corridors and then you get to a big open room and arena type thing where you've got to destroy all the enemies in that area to progress and so on and so forth and the enemies come at you thick and fast you get better weapons you have to manage your inventory a little bit but obviously it's not too that it just wants to keep you going and it's all got this really nice Lovecraftian aesthetic to it as well. Um, and, oh, I just had a having a great time with it. I mean, again, I'm not very good at it. Um, it seems to be a common theme with me um, on games. Uh, but I don't care. I enjoy playing games I'm bad at. Me too. But, yeah, but with this, you kind of like, so about this is like, uh, there is a sort of story to it, but okay, who cares? But you're kind of like the only person left in the world, I think, who's got their full senses. Um, everyone has kind of been taken over, brainwashed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and you're kind of going on a journey to discover what's gone on. Um, I don't know. I don't know why you need a motivation, but that's the motivation for it. What I will say is, can we go back to, like, one thing Doom did, well, he did lots right, but one thing Doom did right, there wasn't a story as such. No one cared. Just, just tell me, look, here's a guy, yeah. he's got a or person, and they're going through these levels to shoot things. Yeah, fine, that'll do me. Um, and it looks great. Um, but... Yeah, okay, for whatever reason, they've given a bit of a story to it. But, yeah, you know, I just... It plays so, so well. Um, and it... We'll probably cover this, by the way. Turtles, really good on the Steam Deck. Um, this, absolutely brilliant on the Steam Deck. I was worried. Uh, but with the uh, trackpad as the controller, oh, 
really good really really good um just it, it's fast it's frantic it's very fluid feeling um and weapon types are interesting the enemy types are interesting um and i say like I, I just love going through it and it's very bloody there's lots of blood and guts and everything it's a proper throwback with a, a nice modernish twist to it yeah yeah excellent yeah no i i get that i get that with the story i the best stories for me personally are always environment like told environmentally and with dialogue from the characters and stuff so you know basically half-life you know they're yeah. the best kind yeah they, they don't interrupt what you're doing you're still being a gamer while you're doing it and it's different if you're playing a game that isn't an action game like it's just action games that i don't want that narrative in i don't want it broken up i'm sick of audio logs i'm sick of like you know data pads i'm sick of stopping while there's a big expedition dump i just want to get in there and start smashing stuff to pieces yeah uh which is why for me doom eternal as good a game as it is moved away from what made doom so good and it was just like if you want to do that create another ip doom eternal would have been great as another ip but when i go into a doom i expect two things guns and shooting i don't care about anything else um and again we go back doom 2016 mocked the idea of what shooters become and then doom eternal went to what it mocked (laughs) kind of like that's true okay uh but yeah yeah, no this is really good it's a real throwback to the 90s um shooter games and yeah really good also protagonist you could pick from a priest or a journalist by the way one's the priest is male i think and the journalist is female uh for no reason other than you've got a male or female character to choose from so i know i'm probably asking too much for us to sort of go why do we need to have male or female why could we just have not have a faceless protagonist um so it doesn't matter but hey it's progress Mm. in a way yeah in a way um but yeah (laughs) and there's no difference in terms of how good the game is with whichever one you choose so it's not as if like oh look it's it's a it's a female so they can jump higher but they're not as strong um or anything like that so it's just a case of one's a priest and one's a one's a journalist and i think their stories are slightly different yeah you need that (laughs) needs that what is it activision's like character wheel of like oh you need to have the god that was terrible yeah yeah let's not do that (laughs) no no way but yeah this is this is absolutely brilliant um well worth your your time your money your investment the whole the whole uh, kit of caboodle whatever I probably butchered what that is kit of caboodle I don't know but it's worth yeah, it forgive yeah. me father I will my son I will uh, it does sound good I'm very <laughs> interested in that because my last one which I didn't play much of um, was also very dark both graphically and you know tone tonally uh-huh. and it's also a boomer shooter throwback and it's also full of guts and viscera but my one was not Forgive Me Father, it was Salako, or Salako, I'm not sure how it's supposed to be pronounced. People are calling it Salako because it sounds like the Sulaco from Aliens, but anyway. And it's basically this exactly what you just said, <laughs> but I mean, it's got a different, slight, slightly different focus. It's you're a person stuck on a, a space, some sort of space thing, space colony place, and you're fighting people, and it looks a bit more like... Fear, in, it, not graphically, but in terms of gameplay. But yeah, no, it's the same sort of thing as a boomer shooter with retro throwback graphics. Uh, it's just a demo so far. It was part of the next fest, whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, I, and that one I only play, played briefly because like neon white works perfectly on deck, turtles works perfectly on deck. The demo of Solaco doesn't work perfectly on deck. I had a couple of crashes couple of things it couldn't handle very well it was really struggling even using i mean it might have been because i used vulcan instead of you know open gl but um i haven't fiddled with with that to that extent but uh yeah it it had a few problems i've not had a massive go but it looks like a really good one to keep an eye on for the future that that game yeah i i kind of saw this one never got around to actually playing it myself um 
I was looking, I was only really going to try one shoot a demo and I went with Agent 64 uh, because that looked so damn good um, as a golden eye follow-up. Yeah, um, yeah. And do you know what? I'd rather play this than a golden eye re- uh, remaster. Um, oh. but anyway, that's for another time. That's for another time. But yeah, I like the look of this one. Um, that, uh, I just, I'm glad I never got to play it, but um, sounds like it's interesting at the very least. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, yeah, I've, as I say, not had much of a go on it, but I'm keeping my eye on it and I'll no doubt pick it up when it's out. Excellent. So I've got one more. And this is not only going to be my blah, 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 blah game of the week. The game of the week. The game of the week. It could well be up there as my game of the year. Um, you know I love a puzzle game. I do. Um, you know I love a bit of a match free. Um, and anything that does something a bit different with that match free. Now, this isn't a new game, technically. Um, so, in the form of game of the year, it's probably not eligible. But, sod it, I don't care. It's called Grindstone. And I think I've spoke about this before on the Switch. It was really, really good on the Switch. Uh, yep. My issue with, uh, with the Switch, I couldn't get to play it because the screen's small and vision issues, etc. So the extra, what, inch is it you get on the uh, Steam Deck compared Maybe. to the Switch? It depends on the Switch, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really makes a difference. And you, it's, something like Grindstone really shows off how much that slightly bigger screen helps uh so essentially what grindstone is is you kind of you you go in and you you go into a level where you've got these different color creeps enemies that you've got uh you've got a uh, like basically slice through a murder they're different colors so there's like there's those red yellow turquoise dark green etc and then basically what you have to do is draw a pattern through any that are linked and then you you kind of slice through them um and each, each one you slice through adds to a damage meter, so to speak, or, 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 or adds, like makes your number go up. And if you get 10 or more, you get like a uh, a gem um, or a grindstone, actually, is why, where it gets its name from. But you get this this grindstone. If you then touch this grindstone, you could switch colours. So you might be going yellow, 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 yellow. Hit a grindstone, and then oh, now I can trace the reds, and then you can maybe go from like a a seven chain up to like a twenty three chain or, or something like that. And the bigger the chain, the bigger the grindstone that drops for the next one, which earns you more grindstones that you use to then buy things to progress through levels. Um, and what what's really good is you've got two di- the creeps work in two different ways. They've got two statuses. One is their normal status, so you can just attack them; they won't do anything. The other is they're flaming, um, and if you're next to them in their damage range, they will then attack you. So there's this really good strategy of right. I can push this chain to go this far, but if I finish here. They're going to attack me, and I'll lose one of three. You get three hearts, and you can lose that heart. Um, but so you said, do I go that far? But I need to go that far because you've got to kill a certain number of creeps to beat the level. Um, yeah. So, but you also, as you progress, you can unlock different like defense mechanisms, extra uh, tools, so you can get like a, a sword that takes out an entire row of creeps, which can be helpful. Um, or you can get a shield that will block the damage. Uh, but obviously you've got to make sure if you're like, if you go and there's three flaming creeps around you, you might protect against one and the other two are going to like take you out. But you've also got on top of that more like semi bosses in each level as well, that you need to have a certain amount of uh, chains together to be able to attack so you might get this enemy that's got a number 10 next to it or a five so you've got to make sure before you get to that enemy you've gone through 10 other creeps to attack that one and that resets your attack meter down to zero etc but what you could do is you could build up some really big chains you go build up a chain build up a chain hit a 10 move on build up another chain hit a five move on build up another chain and then get a a crate that's dropped or something like that and it's kind of it's just layers on top and on top and on top, and it all makes sense as you play. And the progression of this game is absolutely spot on. I'm like, oh, I want to say thirty odd levels in on the main game, 
There's like side quests as well, and I've, I've, I've taken on one of those. There's daily grinds as well, three different types of daily grinds. I was the best player in the world on this for a couple for a few days before anyone was actually playing it. So I am I'm the expert on this game. Ask me anything, but yeah, yeah. absolutely brilliant. The out the art style is outstanding. It's kind of got that Cartoon Network um, Gumball style character design to it. Um, and oh yeah absolutely love it absolutely love it i'm absolutely thoroughly addicted to it um i've put a good i think 10 to 12 hours into it already and it's i've had it less than a week nice one yeah i mean you haven't this year had that many puzzle games that have really leapt out at you have you i don't think no no not really yeah, uh, I've been going back and playing a lot of old ones because it's the new experience yeah. on the Steam Deck. But yeah, nothing new. I'm still awaiting that new Droplets remake. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's. Um, but this is outstanding. It, I mean, it, you could look at it and go, oh, God, it's a mobile game. It was originally a mobile game, but it's one of those complete experiences. It's not a mobile game in the negative sense. Yeah. Brilliant on the on the switch uh, on the switch. So it is really good on the switch, but on the Steam Deck controls work. So analog controls, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, work really well. Touch screen works as well, and you can switch between the two at will without changing any settings. Um, and this is the game I really tested out. Do you know you've got the per game settings now on the Steam Deck? Yeah, um, some very handy they are. Yes, I've got this set to sixty frames per second locked. Um, and I can get the switch down to three watts. Oh, wow. And it still <laughs> maintains 60 frames per second. I did it do it because I want, oh, I must get 60 frames per second because it doesn't matter in a game like this. But I was just interested to see what I could drop it down to before it drops. If I drop it down to the very bottom option, it drops to around 30 to 40 frames per second. So I could probably do a locked 30 at two watts is it the lowest wow that's insane yeah uh, but yeah it's that's mental brilliant uh but what yes yeah, brilliant and it's one of those that i've put onto my actual internal ssd so that whenever i switch between emulation and my emulation sd card and my steam sd card i can still just keep it going um it's there for me um because it's yeah, it's I pick it up once a day now um, and put about an hour in, um, get through a few levels, maybe do a daily grind. Um, it's entered my daily rotation, and it's this one will not be leaving anytime soon. Awesome, yeah, glad to hear it. Um, but yeah, no, that's it on on games, so to speak. A um, couple of bits I want to cover very very quickly. Um, unless you've got anything specific you want to talk about. Well, I was going to suggest we talk about, as we're at a midway point, um, what we're looking forward to for the rest of the year, but it, we don't have to. Very nice I will need to actually have a little look at what I've got on my list, so we could do that next week. Yeah, let's do that next week. Do that next week, uh, because you threw that one on me, and I went, oh, uh, <laughs> stuff, play, loads yeah. of stuff. Is it even out this year? I don't know. Um, yeah. But... Yeah, a couple of things. One, be fiddling with the Steam Deck some more, um, trying out a few different things. And I've managed to get this set up now where it's nigh on perfect for me. So I've installed any desk on the Steam Deck and on my PC, which means I can use the Steam Deck on my PC to do all the gubbins. So anything I need to do in desktop mode, I can do on my PC, blown up to my big screen without plugging in the Steam Deck and stuff like that. Um which I know might not be much to other people, but it means that I can, I've only got the one monitor and I do a lot between the PC and the Steam Deck, transferring files over, stuff like that. Absolutely brilliant for that. I've managed to FTP, I think it's called something, SCP, into the Steam Deck. So I can basically use um, FileZilla or WinSCP to drag and drop files between the two. Yep absolutely brilliant so i've now just got sort of like absolutely just like pure control over the steam deck in, in different modes and i managed to do it this way this is this is really good for anyone who's got an amazon prime 
account and has been downloading all the uh, monthly free games from Amazon, and you've, I, I've got like 350 Amazon games, DRM free. Um, what I've been able to do is download those games to uh, my external drive on the PC, and they put them in an Amazon folder, and they put all the games in the folder. I've then, on my Steam Deck, created a DRM free folder on my one terabyte SD card, and then basically drag those game folders in Add them as the EXEs as non-Steam games. Download all the cover art, you know, if you want to go that far to it. And basically, it gives you a Steam-like experience with games that you might not own on Steam but have got DRM free. And that, what I was originally thinking, oh, this is going to be really difficult and a pain in the ass to do. It was just so, so easy using, like, any desk and, like, with SCP. Um, to the point is, I think everyone should know this. And I'm very tempted to do a video tutorial for it because it's it's changed everything to going, oh, can I, can I play this? Uh, you know, I, I was playing Gunpoint last night, which I don't own on Steam, but I did have five Amazon games. Um, and it's kind of, it surprisingly works really well because it's, it's a mouse and keyboard only game. Works really, really well on the Steam Deck. And it's like, because it's DRM free, I was able just to chuck it on and try. And it was dead simple. Um, so I might do a thing for that. But yeah, if you've got Amazon Games or Prime and you've been downloading, definitely have a look into how to do all that. Nice. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd appreciate that guide. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, the, the only reason I haven't done stuff like that already is because it's Linux. Like, yeah. I, whenever I, I yeah, you know me, I game in PC, fart around with that all the time, do stuff in Windows all the time, based all in Windows, no bugger all about other operating systems basically so yeah no a guide to that would be fantastic and then i can oh, start definitely um, and what i would say actually if okay i've never really touched linux um apart from obviously i, I suppose when it's like uh boss or tear or whatever it's called or like the uh, uh 351 elec on the uh the ambidic devices are linux based but that's all built for you and there's no need to go anywhere but essentially the desktop area on the steam deck if you know Windows, you can use this because it's no different apart from where it improves things. That's the yeah. only thing I would say. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll do a video guide um, on how to do this thing because honestly, if I could do it with my ADHD, then anyone can. Sweet. Um, and also, the last thing, just want to touch on, uh, we came up on the forum. Um, and I'm going to talk about the forum because people listen to us apparently I was quite surprised we got a bit of good feedback so yay Um, um, is there's been discussion again about games difficulty um, and how should they handle it and stuff like that Um, again I will reiterate games should be accessible for everyone have an upfront make use of the press A to start uh, screen that every game seems to have and have a do you wish to start the game without looking at accessibility options or would you like to press this button to have a look at the accessibility options Um, and give them there and difficulty wise give the options from easy up to like impossible challenge and also have the would you like to be able to skip these types of sections as an option there's no reason for a game that you've paid money for to play offline that you can't go i don't want to take on bosses do that for me because if you're neurodiverse if you've got mobility issues sight issues you could be really enjoying a game you come to a boss and then you go well i can't do this because my mobility issues Uh, But I want to enjoy the rest of the game. So either a guided option where it makes the boss really easy. So maybe it's like a two or three hit kill. Um, They telegraph their movements more or they just go, yeah, all right, we'll play it for you and skip it. Um, That needs to be in all games. It really, really does. uh, Because not everyone can play your game and i'm not saying every game has to be for everybody because i've seen that as an argument okay i'm not saying that you need to make your your 4x game super easy for me to play because that's i, I don't I, I don't get on with 4x games i, I, I keep trying them 
I don't get on with them. You haven't got to make that game for me. But what you do need to do is make that game for someone who likes a 4X game with a disability. You've got to allow them to play your game. Now, I don't expect... like I know you should, you're not a big fan of the roguelike games. So they don't have to make a roguelike game that caters to you. Yeah. But if you like the roguelike game but you only had one working hand, there should be an option to somehow make that game playable with one controller, with one part of a controller. You know, whether that's a yeah. lower difficulty setting or a, look, automatic battle, automatic attacks, you just worry about time in the jumps or you just got to press a button at the right time and we will choose the right attack. Something like that that then allows you to play that game. Um, it's the same as like I enjoy I want to play um, Monster Hunter Rise I can't play Monster Hunter Rise not because the game itself is bad not because of anything the actual gameplay side is fine I cannot read the text yeah so that needs an option where it goes that text becomes readable or has audio for the text as well like um, like uh, Disco Elysium which I can't see all the text properly but it reads it to me so those options have to be in there the same with difficulty make it so anyone could play your game if that's the game they like yes yeah and I think you're right in that you should start from an accessibility standpoint so you know like there are people like me who don't have a physical disability that will prevent me from playing certain games but I'm not very good at the parts that progress you through the game so I don't play them so I'm thinking mainly of you know obviously the, the Dark Souls type games like Elden Ring and, and you know all of that and Sekiro but I'm not really the the issue to start with like catering for me should be way down the page and it should start with adding in the accessibility and then if I can use those accessibility options to just go oh well I want to make a game easier by my particular criteria then I can so I think you're entirely right start out with the kind of being able to adjust stuff because all games are sliders you know it's like this enemy has this slider and then you slide it up for boss enemies just adjust those to start with and then think about more clever ways of doing it as you go along but put those options in just so that people can access it and i never buy the argument of but if we do an easy difficulty or we make it that someone could do what they want to do in it it can break the game um you might not uh you know you might get overpowered or you might not get enough xp or whatever then i'll go that's not the fault of the gamer there's something fundamentally wrong with your game design if yes yeah changing something to make it accessible for someone breaks the game what have you done wrong and again look at Forza horizon 5 they got that spot on you can slow that game down and it still presents the same challenge as someone who's able-bodied or able-minded to play and then someone who's like got a disability whether it's physical or mental to still play that game and get the same challenge now if you was to play that same game and drop the the, the uh make it slower fine you know what that might make it easier for you but if it's offline who cares who really cares the only yeah. time i would argue and go it shouldn't be allowed is in a competitive online environment unless you could then go actually look we've actually got two online environments the as devs intended online environment for competitive and the accessibility environment um so that you know no one's getting a cheated unfair advantage uh, and you know I don't know how you could regulate that so I get it for online but any offline mode in any game the user should be able to dictate how they play that game yeah well, I completely agree I don't play Monopoly properly you know I, do. I, I, I don't stick to the rules on that yeah so uh, yeah it's house rules isn't it you know he's sticking house rules in there to make it a better balance for you Oh, do you know what? That, that's not what they can even call it. If they wanted to get away from the whole idea of accessibility, because that's a dirty word for some people, house rules. Just yep. have a house rules mode. Yeah. Yeah, because branding is really important. Yeah. Like, you know, if you if you say if you say to a gamer, oh, we're going to tweet this, we're going to tweet that, they're all, you know, instantly up in arms. But if you have, a, a like, a, a branded thing, this is, you know, house rules, then... Yeah, people will just accept it. They might grumble, but they'll accept it. Yeah, 
We there you go. We've solved video games. We always do, my friend. We always do. So next week we are becoming the mental health film podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shift on to the next genre, definitely. Uh, yeah, Jesus Christ, no! I don't even want to try and fix the film industry. <laughs> Ugh, no. Uh, yeah, as bad as video games are, and they're bad in some areas. The film industry has, has still got that hold my beer part to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a production line for abusers. <laughs> this is what it is. Yeah. They make films so they've got enough. The only reason they make films is to have enough money to carry on their abuse. That's it, basically. Yeah. And then pay off people, yeah. And to pay them off, yeah. Oh, dear. Um, I, I'm going to. We've we completely avoided actual politics, so I'm going to shut up now. Well, that's a rarity for us, so yeah, I'll take that one, definitely. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, so. Uh, hope everybody's had a good week and a good week to come as usual follow us on all the socials watch out for that video that brad's going to be doing for the steam deck for all of the three of you out there who've actually got one i think you know me and brad have taken up you know 50 percent of the available steam decks in the whole of the uk so yeah good luck apart from that have a great week stay safe and stay sane <laughs>